When Porsche released the Cayenne, many people, myself included, turned their noses to the sky. It was big, it was ugly, and not the kind of car you'd expect Porsche to make. I mean, what business did a sports car manufacturer have making an SUV? It's like Range Rover releasing a sports car. It made no sense, but it did incredibly well, and it's now on to its second generation. However, it is a bit big for some people, so Porsche's come up with a smaller SUV solution, the Macan. But here's the kicker. It's been mooted as more of a sports car than an SUV. This is one of those cars, one that you knew was going to be a thing before Porsche's designers had even put pen to paper. Porsche had made the big boy and a smaller one was needed for countries with small roads and people who really like diesel. The Macan isn't ugly either, it's quite a handsome beast which should help it do well just like its bigger brother. And plainly it is the type of car you buy when you want family car space but the commanding view an SUV gives you. However, what the Macan has is the two things that make a Porsche a Porsche. Performance and pedigree. It'd be silly to assume Porsche would make anything other than something with a bit of go, surely. There are a number of engines to choose from, diesels, etc., but naturally there's only one that I'm interested in, the turbo. A 394 brake horsepower, 3.6 litre bi-turbo V6. The big numbers are 0 to 62 in around 4.6 seconds and a top speed of over 160 miles an hour. And Porsche says that if you're a good little driver, you can get about 30 mpg out of it. But as I always say, if you go for the turbo, mpg is probably not your chief concern. That's all well and good, but if you're going to have lots of power in a car, you need to pop something on there to make sure drivers don't fling themselves off the road, lest they blame Porsche for making a car they can't handle. So there's PASM, damping, all the traction control you could care to mention, etc, etc, etc. Basically, this thing has been designed so even the dimmest of drivers can have a little bit of fun with it. Now, Porsche says they honed it on a track specifically so it handles unlike any SUV and more like a sports car. Here's a little nugget. To prove that, the wheels on the back are wider than those on the front, so you get more grip at the rear, but better turning at the front. That's, that's clever. Where the Cayenne has done very well, it does have something hanging over its head. The Range Rover, the car that defines the luxury SUV market. So I wonder whether the Macan will let off a decent salvo at, say, the Range Rover Evoque. I mean, thinking about it, low-end Macans are top-end Evoque money. And while Range Rovers come with luxury as standard, well... Porsches come with pedigree. Toys made from years and years and years of making cars go really quickly round and round and round in wobbly circles. And when you think about it, if this is a better on-road car than the Evoque and it has the shiny sports car badge on it, well, it might just take the shine off that Evoque order. Curiously, the Macan has a stable made from Audi, the Q5. They share some underbody bits, but not all that much. Porsche says that two thirds of the Macan is all new. Engines, body, transmission, springs, the steering wheel's the same one you get in the 918 hypercar. So basically everything apart from the aluminium bits hidden deep within its core. As far as ride goes, in comfort mode, it is very, very lovely. It's basically what you'd expect from a nice Porsche. Now, it's Sport and Sport Plus where it really comes into its own when the road gets a bit twisty and you can start having a little bit of fun. The suspension firms up, the throttle response gets firmer and the wonderful PDK dual clutch gearbox really does its thing, hanging onto the gears, changing as quick as it possibly can. And that adds to the driving experience. The steering is great. It feels really nice. It's nice and progressive. And yeah, you do feel the assistance, and in that respect, it's not as razor sharp as it could be, but it certainly does the job. Now, even though Porsche's been marketing this as a sports car SUV thing, it can actually hack it when the road gets a bit manky. 
press the off-road button, the car raises itself up and can cope with pretty much anything we've thrown at it. Admittedly, we haven't been scaling vertical rock faces, but it's all been gritty, nasty, sandy roads. And yeah, the car will slide around a little bit if you give it some, which is really fun, I've got to say. But it just copes with it with a plomb, without off-road tyres on it. That's how advanced it is. That's how much it can do. It has such a great breadth of capability. And that's genuinely impressive. I do wonder about cars like this. It's so powerful, so capable, so technically brilliant. Is anyone who buys it actually going to use it to its fullest? Are they going to drive everywhere at 10 tenths or are they going to buy the Macan because it's got a nice badge and the performance to get them out of trouble? For some people, an SUV is the be-all and end-all. You get space, practicality and all that jazz. But what the Macan adds to the mix is a little bit of that DNA. That's something that made Porsche the behemoth, the household name that it is today. And you can have some serious fun with it if you want to, which means it can be your track toy, your top transport and your travel tool all in one. It could be your everything car. Or you could just park it on the drive and take it to the shops every now and then. No matter what their intended use is, I'll tell you one thing, this is gonna sell by the thousand. Oh.